Now that Apple's M4 series of Macs are here, including the absolutely insane M4 Max MacBook Pro that's been breaking performance records, it's time to address the elephant in the room, the M4 Ultra Max Studio, which some of you should absolutely be waiting for instead of getting tempted into upgrading to one of these right now. I've been seeing a bunch of questions floating around like, is it actually worth waiting for this? Just how fast is it gonna be? Which new features should we expect? Should you just get an M2 Pro Mac Mini right now instead? And is a new Mac Studio even coming at all? Well, I'm gonna answer all those questions in this video, including some M4 Ultra performance estimates. But first, I've gotta settle the most important question. Yes, the Mac Studio is coming, and I'm sure of it for three different reasons. Reason number one is that Mark Gurman has been talking about the Mac Studio for months, aiming at a mid-2025 release, but just last week, he updated his timeline right after these guys got announced, saying that the Mac Studio might actually come as soon as March up until June, so that's actually very good news. Reason number two is that months ago, Mark Gurman leaked all of the code names for the entire M4 series of chips. Donan, Brava, and Hydra. Donan stands for the regular M4 chip, while Brava apparently is split into two different chips, a low-end and a high-end, which points to it being the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. And as far as the last code name, we have Hydra, which has to be the M4 Ultra chip. And since it's not just Brava 2C die in its own separate code name, it points to the M4 Ultra being a mono monolithic chip with a brand new standalone design which has massive implications for performance which I'll get into in just a minute. And finally for reason number three as for why I believe the Mac Studio is coming, the M2 Ultra that we have right now is getting outperformed by the new M4 Pro Mac Mini in terms of CPU performance. It's actually rather embarrassing that this machine is $4,000 and the $5,000 upgrade version with a 76 core GPU is almost getting outperformed by the M4 Max's GPU in terms of raw graphics performance. Actually, if you weren't aware, the M2 Ultra was already getting outperformed by the M3 Max chip in terms of real world performance in certain tests and benchmarks. Because of this, nobody in the entire world should be buying the current M2 Ultra Max Studio. So Apple absolutely must must upgrade it to the M4 Ultra as soon as possible if they actually want to sell it at all. Now, in terms of the feature set, honestly, this Mac Studio is already fully featured in my opinion. I mean, look at the ports. It's got tons of them. It has two on the front with the SD card. It's got a bunch on the back. Honestly, the only thing that I would change is of course making them all Thunderbolt 5 ports. So that's six of them. Honestly, there's not much they can add to this Mac Studio other than of course the performance, which is gonna be the number one reason why people upgrade to this Mac Studio, especially since with the M4 chip for a $2,000 price, it's a killer deal for high-end performance. However, what everybody's excited about is the brand new unreleased M4 Ultra, and I believe that chip is gonna be sending shockwaves through the PC industry, being not only the fastest CPU in all time, but also the fastest GPU. The M4 Max is already benchmarking higher than any other chip ever made in terms of single core performance, and then in terms of multi-core, this thing destroys them as well. So if you consider this performance, the M4 Ultra is gonna be on a whole new level. So with that said, let's get into estimating the performance. But first, I wanna show you this, the Wave Electric Toothbrush from our sponsor, Lifen, that our entire crew here at MaxTech, including our families, have been using for the past year and will never go back to any toothbrush for five reasons. Number one is that it uses servo system technology with a six watt motor, which is three times more powerful than other competing brands like these $300 Oral-B and Philips toothbrushes, but the Wave is the world's first electric toothbrush with combined vibration and 60 degree oscillation, which is actually the brushing technique recommended by dentists. 
Number two is the compact and premium design that's so much more portable than other electric toothbrushes, and it's made out of premium materials like aluminum, which is my favorite, while being IPX7 waterproof with no gaps for gunk to end up in, and a pressure sensitive button that still works great after a year of use. Number three is the really cool magnetic fast charger, which charges in just two and a half hours and lasts for weeks while giving you Apple-like MagSafe cable vibes. Number four is full customization in the app, which lets you customize three different modes, including power and oscillation, which you can switch between with a double tap of the button or hold it down for two seconds to enter flight mode so it won't accidentally turn on. And number five is the value because you get all of this for as low as $69 for the ABS model or $79 for the aluminum alloy model, which is my favorite. And they've also got more options like stainless steel and even titanium. And it's only $15.99 for a three pack of new brush heads. But making it even better, Lifen is doing a huge up to 40% off sale for this Black Friday season. So definitely use the link in the description to order one for yourself or heck, order a few for your whole family, seeing as you can get four aluminum wave toothbrushes for around the same price of just one of those $300 competitors. And that's before factoring in the Black Friday sale. So definitely use the link below to order your life and wave toothbrush today. First off, we have the core counts. And Mark Gurman has said that he expects it to have double the CPU and GPU cores as the M4 Max. So that means 32 CPU cores and 80 GPU cores, the main difference this time around is that the M4 Ultra seemingly will no longer be using the Ultra Fusion design where they combined two Max chips together to create one based on all that information about the new code name. Instead, the M4 Ultra could be using a new monolithic design, which basically means it's just one big CPU die with its own unique design, which is a massive deal. Why? Well, because the M1 Ultra and M2 Ultra chips suffered from scaling issues where doubling the CPU and GPU cores compared to the Max chips did not get you anywhere near double the performance. So a monolithic design where everything sticks on one die will massively improve performance and efficiency, even if the core count might not actually be exactly double of what we get in the M4 Max. But just for sake of comparison and based on the leaks from Mark Gurman, let's assume that it is double the number of cores on a monolithic die. First off, in terms of single core performance, I'd expect it to be exactly the same as what we have with the M4 Max, but in multi-core, the M4 Max already scores 26,675, which is insane, but the issue with Geekbench's multi-core test is that it suffers from diminishing returns with higher core counts compared to how it used to work, since now it's just one big task, which all the cores have to tackle, so there is diminishing returns. So with that said, I'm gonna be very conservative and only expect a 50% improvement in terms of multi-core compared to the M4 Max, despite the monolithic design due to the diminishing returns. That gives us a multi-core score of 40,012, which is still insane and blows away the competition in every single way. Now moving on to the graphics side, this should actually scale much better, seeing as we could be getting the monolithic design and GPUs usually scale better. So I think we should expect almost the same GPU scaling as we got going from the 20 core M4 Pro to the 40 core M4 Max. 78% GPU scaling for having double the cores. Because of that, I'd expect it to be a little bit worse on the M4 Ultra, let's say about 70% better scaling than the M4 Max, which gives us 336,181 Geekbench graphics test points. And folks, believe it or not, that right there is faster than a factory purchase desktop NVIDIA RT RTX 4090 GPU, which finally means that yes, Apple has overtaken even Nvidia in terms of GPU performance, at least until the 5090, and they did it with an SOC that's a full computer built into a chip, including the world's fastest CPU, tons of hardware chips like media engines, neural engines, display engines, Thunderbolt controllers, memory bus chips, everything in one chip that can fit into a compact 
Mac Studio that's smaller in volume than an entire RTX 4090 GPU by itself. So yes, that right there is why some of you should be waiting for the M4 Ultra Mac Studio instead of buying one of these right now, especially for those of you who actually are being limited by the performance in crazy machines like this, and you could actually take advantage of the extra performance. But honestly, 90% of you out there would be just fine with an M2 Pro Mac Mini for $1,600, which is why I'd say a lot of you should just buy that right now because it's a killer value, and you'll be waiting to buy the Mac Studio for no reason other than bragging rights. So if you're not doing insanely complex tasks and you're just doing basic photo editing, video editing, some programming, the Mac Mini is gonna be fine for you. Now the ones who should definitely wait are those who are doing things like 3D rendering, where there is no limit to how much performance you could have for the GPU, or let's say certain programming or scientific, mathematic tests or tasks where you need endless amounts of CPU performance and RAM. But then again, considering the value, this M4 Ultra Max Studio is gonna start at $4,000. That's really good bang for your buck if you wanna wait for that because this thing right here, the 16 inch, is almost $4,000 anyway. So you're getting a lot of value. So with that said, keep in mind your priorities and your performance needs. And if you think you can use it, wait for the Mac Studio. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely subscribe because we're getting the new Macs very soon. We can't wait to test them. So can't wait to see you in that video. Definitely check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.